There'll be no sleep for any of us this morning until those children are packed off to school. Small slam, game and rubber. Well, well, my luck certainly is in. As far as I'm concerned, your luck has finished. What are our losses? Just a tick, I'll add it all up. Oh, surely you're not quitting already. Already? Oh, you've only played the clock round once. Well, I break about even. What's the bad news, George? Fifty pound, old boy. So you might as well grin and bear it. Always a privilege to lose to you. In fact, you're one of our most privileged guests, Jack, darling. Fifty pounds. Well, here's mine for twenty-five. And Middleton will do the same. Won't you, Middleton? What? I said you'll do the same. Oh, rather. Same as what? Your check, old boy. Twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five. That's all. Oh, good. I'll, uh, see to it. Please, Rebecca, Solly, Ruth, come on in. Your breakfast is ready. And you won't have no breakfast if you ain't chopped. That little boy here again? Why doesn't he go to his son instead of hanging about and playing with his children? But he's got no home layer. Ah, poor little boy never. Rubin, maybe we ought to give that little boy something to eat. But no, such foolishness to think of it. Too many kids already we've got, and another one coming maybe. Mm. What a life, what a life. Twenty-five. This is all you've got, every cent. Yes, if we take it, how'll you get along? Same as usual. Sell a car or a block of flats or something. We're still born one a minute, you know. Yes, but supposing you don't. My dear boy, when I'm broke, something always happens. Peter, darling, listen. Take a fiver. Not a penny. Just in case you draw blank. I won't. But you're broke. Yes, and you can't go to your club. You've told us you owe them so much money you daren't go near it. That's right. I'm homeless and I'm penniless. Tonight I'll occupy either the best suite of the Ritz or the worst seat on the embankment. I'm not sure which. Mm. Thanks again, but I like being broke. Makes me go to work. Don't worry about him. He'll get some mug to buy something. This great city is full of opportunities. Go on, pop it. I won't. You know I was here first. What if you was? I'm bigger than you. Now buzz off. Hello. Two of you, eh? Well, who was first? I was, Governor. But please! There then, little un. First come, first served, you know. You know how it is. First come, first served. If I'd only seen you before, you could have had the deal and earned yourself a couple of hundred. Sure nothing else? Not a thing. They won't be for weeks. Sorry. Oh, well, I suppose I can always sweep the street. <laughs> well, what is it? Let me do the scrubbing, Mrs. I'll do it for tuppence. You clear that, or I'll call a popper. Hanging round the streets? You'll never do any good. You'll never amount to anything, Middleton. Send this to Peterson's. Buy a mail. Why don't you get a steady job and settle down? Steady job? <laughs> All work and no pay. Hmm? Well, oh boy, I haven't a thing. Sorry to leave you, but I'm going out to lunch. You'll get something. There are always chances. Oh, yes, there are always chances. Two shillings and fourpence, that's all right. I don't care. Oh, any more for you today? Oh, 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 Look at his grapes for you. Look at them. Lovely fat and juicy. But so fish grub for you people. Look at them. All lovely running. As big as rugby football. They're all beautiful. They're... 
with you in a minute. Suppose you stop bullying that kid. And supposing you mind your own blinking business. Supposing you try and make me. And supposing I can. <laughs> I'm coming too. Oh, I'm afraid that's just a bit impossible. You see, I'm very busy today. Yes, today is my busy day. I've got a... Here, I say, old son. What's worrying you? I'm your aunt. Awful, please. Here, look here. This won't do. Be a little man. Everything's all right. No, it ain't. Yes, I'm afraid you're about right. Come on now, tell me, what's the matter? I thought you and me was pals. Well, so we are. But you won't send me away. Well, don't you want to get back to your other pals? Well, then what about going home? That's an idea. I'll take you home. I ain't got no home. Well, where do you live? Mr. Darius is... It's the way sent the orphanage man to fetch me. Then I run. You run, eh? And since then? I mostly run. Hmm. It's rather an awkward situation, isn't it? Thanks. Hey. I mostly run, too. Partner. Good evening. Good evening. Have you got accommodation for a bachelor with a small boy? What? I mean a small bachelor... an uncle. I don't take in small children. I'm pretty big. Well, I might make an exception in this case. I've only one bed sitting room. This is it. a week, fires extra. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, it's furnished. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course, I realize you get much more for it unfurnished. If you don't like it, you needn't take it. Oh, no, 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 please don't misunderstand me. I think it's a charming room. I like all these. They go so well with the pictures on the wall. They're mostly my relations. Really? Well, that's splendid. I'm sure we should be very comfortable, Mrs. Um... My name's Badger. I'm sure it is. My name's Middleton, and this is Billy. Won't his mother be here as well? Oh, I can promise you about that. Oh, I see. You'll be sure and ask me for anything you want, won't you, Ducky? Takes a woman, you know, sometimes. 
How'd you like your new home, dear? It's like a palace. Bless his little heart. That'll be 17 and 6, if you please, Mr. Middleton, paid in advance. Oh, yes, that's quite understood. Mm, well, if it's convenient. Uh, well, I'm afraid at the moment I haven't quite sufficient to... Uh... Yes, it's a bit too late to go to the bank, isn't it? Yes, much too late. But when? I'll pay you tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Besides, it's all against the rules of the house. Of course, I could make an exception in this case, but uh, mind it is tomorrow. Good. Well, what about a spot of tea? You'll get no food in this house till the rent's paid. Men with children. <laughs> Well, sorry, old son. The best we can do. I think she's only ugly on the outside. And as for that poor child, I've seen so open water for days, let alone have a bottle. Never heard of anything so stupid that I never did. I must say, you've made us more than at home. I think we shall like staying here. That depends on tomorrow. Ah, uh, yes, tomorrow. No, oh, that's all right. Let's take care of that this evening. This evening? Yes. You didn't say what your business was, Mr. Middleton. No. I only hope it's respectable. Trying to eat the spoon. Would you like some more? No, thank you. Well, so I should think. Most people have luggage. We can manage things. Mm -hmm. You know your own business best? See you tomorrow. <laughs> you were right, old fella. She is only ugly on the outside. Hey, look here. Bed for you. Come on. <laughs> I'm clean now. Look. Oh, no. <laughs> look at that. If you're going to be a big man, you've got to wash properly. Come on. Eat it? <laughs> Shouldn't think that poor child had ever seen food before. And him all poshed up to the nines and no cash. It's a funny thing to be. What about the mother? That's what I'd like to know. Can't be up to any good, whoever she is. Look at that poor child. I expect they parted and, and he's got the custody. I've no doubt there's been a law case. And that's why he's broke. Hmm. It's a sad thing to me, though. He don't know the first thing about children. Coming here without so much as a handbag. I'd better lend them these pyjamas of my Harry's. Lucky thing I kept them after he was took. You'd better put them to air. I know that. I'd like to know what he thought that poor child was going to sleep in. Here we are. All right. Now, pyjamas. <clears throat> What's that? Don't you know what pyjamas are? Well, what do you sleep in? Mrs. Harris's attic. <laughs> now, that tablecloth would be the very thing. If only I could find some... Let's have a look here. Ah! Uh, uh, I always fancied myself as a tailor. Now, this will give Monsieur an idea of the passion, huh? Very chic, very chic. Go on, cut it up, Ah, uh, here we go. I wouldn't have him catch a chill, Paul Lamb. I should say that he had enough. <laughs> Better sure than sorry. Didn't your mother ever tell you that? These are being worn this season. There we are. Now, you be a good boy and go to sleep while I go out and try and make somebody buy something. Why? Well, we've got to earn commission. Commission. 
Well, it's money I get for selling something I haven't got to somebody who doesn't want it. What's what? Now, look here. You be a good fellow and lie down. Don't ask any more questions, huh? You're coming back, ain't you? You bet I am. You're a pal, you are. So long, old son. So long, partner. I just brought some pajamas. I thought the poor little chap would like. He's asleep. Sleep? Uh. My best tablecloth, what Badger gave me for a wedding present. You'll pay for this. All right, tomorrow. I ain't saying anything about it now, but you wait till tomorrow. Everything will be quite all right. Look over there. Hello, Peter. Hello, Tony. Hello, Peter. How's my mate? Have a drink? No, thanks. You're not on the wagon. No, just not drinking. Don't tell me you're broke again. You read me like a book. It's only a fortnight ago I gave you that order for ten comet trucks for the Metropolitan Laundry. You must have cleared 500 pounds in commission. Mm. And you've done it in already? Yes, and more besides. Three large brandies, quick. Horses? No, cards. Good old Peter, start raving man. <laughs> well, what now? Or just nosing around. How are things, Smithy? Oh, pretty grim. I sold a couple of cars today. It's the first deal for a week. Do you know, the motor trade's rotten. I'm seriously thinking of cutting down my golf to three days a week. So you must economize somehow. Yes, if things don't get better, I should be cutting down my meals to one a year. As bad as that? Never worse. Look here, do you know where you can get hold of the latest model of Bentley Coupe? At once? Sound too easy. What's the catch in it? Must you try it? He's got a foreign prince that wants one by tomorrow. You know, you pay anything for it. Yes, but I can't find the exact car. I'll get you one if I've got to pinch it. Well, you're on a fat check if you do. Well, here's the description of the car he wants. 1934, three and a half litre, six cylinder Bentley, red foursome. I shan't be here long. You can put the car on the car. Very good, miss. Ten pound note. A ten pound note, sir? Yeah, what about it? But what for, sir? Oh, a mere trifle. Get, get your boss to sell me this car. Sell it? Well, we've just bought it. Well, that's all the more reason to sell it. Before it gets too old. Is it? But... Uh, no, 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 don't start raising objections. The deal's as good as done. What's your name? Uh, Jerome, sir. Well, I'll just look her over and then I'll have a chat to your boss. Run the engine, will you? Yes, sir. Bev it up, will you? Perfect, not a tap. Right, switch her off. Beautifully kept. You certainly know your business. Thank you, sir. Always try to. Do yes, it. I'm sure you do. Hey, hey, be careful what you're doing. No worry, I'm all right. I'm terribly sorry. 
I tell you, how awfully clumsy of me. I wouldn't have had this happen for worlds. I hope I haven't broken anything. Uh, in your handbag, I mean. I don't think there's any damage done, really. Well, that's nice of you to be so nice. Oh, not um, at all. As a matter of fact, it's very kind of you to be so kind. <laughs> well, that's that. But really, you know, having bumped into you like this, I simply can't see you walk along the pavement out of my life. I say, I've hurt your foot. Oh, no, it's nothing. You must let me give you a lift. Well, uh, yes, uh, perhaps it would be better than walking. <laughs> I suppose you work around here, do you? Well, uh, no, I'm uh, not working at the moment. Ah, uh, looking for a job. Mm -hmm. That's tough. I know how you feel. You? But how could you possibly know? with this marvellous car. Oh, I'm always in sympathy with the underdog. Yes, I feel it. How fine of you. Uh, where shall we tell uh, your man to take us? Well, uh, where do you want to go? Well, I'm terribly hungry. H hungry? Well, I don't suppose you know the meaning of the word, but, well, I'd love some food. Uh, well, uh, where shall we go? Uh, the Maison de Paris. Um, Maison de Paris? I've heard it's the nicest place in town. I've always longed to go there. Uh, yes, yes. I haven't been there uh, much lately. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps the Ritz. No, no, no. <laughs> One place is just the same as another as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, shall we go? Maison de Paris, you know. No. No. Um, I'm playing a joke on somebody. He mustn't know who I am. He must think I've never been here before. Uh, tell your staff not to recognize me. Certainly, Miss. Uh, Madame. Pleasure. Oh, Mr. Middleton, you haven't been here for a long time. No, I uh, haven't uh, been here. That's why. I hope Madame will enjoy her first visit. Madame will excuse me. I will see you about the table. Miss Hatch is here. She doesn't wish to be known as Miss Hatch, some little joke. Mr. Middleton is with her. He has some bills outstanding. Watch him. Ah, here it is, Mr. Middleton. Monsieur? Go. Apparently, Monsieur? Uh, well, um... Oh, yes. Uh, two champagne cocktails to me, so at once. You don't mind, do you? No, of course not. It's such a treat to me. Order, monsieur. Grapefruit, um, shrimp cocktail. Well, I don't think we'll, um... Caviar. Oh, do let's have caviar, may we? Why, of course. Do caviar. No, one. I'm on a diet. I'll have one thing and one only. Bring me a glass of ice water. One caviar. Oh, well, I can't if you don't. Why, of course you can. I, I, I'm not in the least hungry. And soup to follow, monsieur. Uh, consume? Cream pronto, that is very special. All spring vegetables, that is very good. I'd adore that. Two. No, one. Uh, I'll have a glass of ice water. But you can't live on ice water. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> and uh, fish, monsieur? Uh, Sole, Colbert? Oh, that sounds delicious. You must have that too. Yes, I might be able to have a little of that. Two sole, Colbert. Uh, we'll order the rest of the later on. Very good, monsieur. Well, um... Good health, mister. My name's Peter Middleton. What's yours? King. Miss or Mrs.? Miss. That's good. Why do you ask? Because I'd like to have dinner again with you one night when I've got some loaf. Are you sure there's no one with a prior right to be dining with him? Well, um... Nobody of any very great importance. That's incredible. Well, of course there's Daddy, but then... Well, he really doesn't count. Well, do you live with him? Yes. I understand. You're really the mainstay of the home. Well, Daddy seems to think so. Too bad he can't get something. Oh, he, he does his best, poor old darling, but... 
Well, you know how it is. Yes, I know. Jobs are scarce enough for young people. Can they do anything at all? Well, he, um, he potters about and he has his hobbies. It's just a little hobby of mine. Nothing hobby? serious. <laughs> I wish I had a little hobby that brought me in 15,000 a year. You should take my tip, Brent. Yes, but my dear fellow, no one ever thought your petrol stations were going to turn out as they have done. Well, hasn't the Hatch Motor Corporation always paid on all its flotations? Petrol stations were bound to succeed. I had everything my own way. I had the capital for the sites when everybody else was broke. Well, naturally, I could make my own terms. Dinner is served, sir. Why so early? 7.30, sir. Nonsense. Miss Cynthia isn't in yet. 7.30, absolute rubbish. It's 7.15. You've got all the pieces, Mother. 7.31, sir. That watch of yours must be fast. The only thing about you that is. May I suggest, sir, that yours is slow? You've been here about 20 years, haven't you, Muffet? 24 years, sir. Well, one of these days you'll go out quicker than you... Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, it was very wrong of Cynthia. She knew you were coming to dinner. Well, perhaps something's delayed her. Something's always delaying that girl. Comes in at all hours. I don't know what's happening to young folks nowadays. Didn't she telephone or anything? No, sir. Car to town about a half an hour ago. Is Cynthia's dining at the Maison de Paris, sir. Oh, why on earth couldn't you say so? Come along, we'll have dinner now. <laughs> I expect Daddy will be furious, but it's been worth it. Well, if you say so. Then it has been worth it. I expect this dinner must be rather a novelty for you, Mr. Middleton. Yes, um, a great novelty. I can understand that. It must be strange giving dinner to a working girl. Strange but interesting. That is, of course, if people like you are interested in how the other half lives. You seem pretty certain that we do belong to opposite halves. Oh, I'm sure we do. I mean, you do everything so magnificently. All this. I've often wondered how Cinderella felt. Now I know. You're kind, aren't you? You like to feel you're giving pleasure to someone who's... who's absolutely nobody. Don't be absurd. Yes, you do. And you're unselfish. I'm just beginning to realize that. It... it makes me feel rather ashamed of myself. Whatever for? Well, I'm not exactly what I've been pretending. I... Do you think anything you could say would make any difference? No. Then forget it. I don't care if you even robbed your last employer. I'm in no position to criticize. I'm as much up against it as you are. You're joking. Listen, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll tell you a secret. That wasn't my car at all. I was broke, and I was going to sell it. I haven't got a bee. But how do you live? Hand to mouth. I'm not particular whose hand it is, as long as it's my mouth. <laughs> but why haven't you got a regular job? Well, I never wanted one before. Well, you must get one. You must meet some influential people. Now, let me see. You know the motor business? Only too well. Well, I think it'd be a good idea if you got in touch with Ben Hatch. Who? Ben Hatch. Haven't you heard of him? Heard of him? Why, he owns the entire industry. I'd never get near him with a regiment of soldiers. How do you know? Well, everybody knows. He's dynamite. I'd blow him sky high before I finished. Well, I'm glad I don't hold any Blue Point shares. Blue Points? I tell you, Brett, that within three months they'll come crawling to me to take them over at my own terms. The biggest joke I've had for years. <laughs> Black or white, sir? Black, please. Oh, no, hurry up. Don't be all night. Yes, I can't understand why you bother with petrol stations when you've got so many larger interests. Oh, they run themselves. This is a fight. I love it. <laughs> I sell a hundred gallons to their one. He thinks in millions. What chance did I have? Try. But what's the use? Please, I want you to. <laughs> it's obvious you don't know this man, Hatch. All right, I'll try and see him. Good. If you can only succeed, you'll be fixed for life. And so will you. If I have any luck tomorrow, I'll take an office and engage a secretary. Are you willing to be engaged? I might, as a secretary. No, but joking apart, I should be terribly anxious to know how you get on. All right, we'll meet here again for lunch tomorrow. Agreed? Agreed. 
And in the meantime, how are you going to pay the bill? Oh, I'll charge it. They used to know me very well here. Uh, what, what's this? Uh, these are some old bills, monsieur. You signed them. It was about a year ago. The manager thought that perhaps you will know this. Oh, yes. Yes, I must have got those. <laughs> uh, how much? Uh, we, uh, the, with the bill for tonight, monsieur, 17 pounds, three shillings. 17 pounds, three shillings. Oui, monsieur. Give me a chance for a 20-pound note. Monsieur. What are you up to now? I thought you said you hadn't got a bean. I haven't. But money isn't everything. Let me see. Yeah, this will take care of Valetti. And, um... <laughs> it's strange how one forgets these things. I suppose these are all in order. Ah. Uh, yes. Right, keep the chain. Uh, thank you, Monsieur. Good night, Monsieur. Good night, Madame. Good night. Mr. Middleton's hat. Mr. Middleton's hat. I trust everything has been satisfactory. Grazie, Signore. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Monsieur. It is all right, sir. He pay me. Everything? Every penny. Seventeen pounds, three shillings. He asked me for change for a twenty-pound note. I get the change. He pays the bill. What with? With these. Where's the twenty-pound note? <laughs> Secret! Non de idiot, I'm a chili. I think Hatch will like this plan, old son. If I can only sell it to him. Well, you'll look all right, partner, when I've finished with you. Oh, I will, will I? Just a minute. Trousers, Billy. Thanks. Well, you can if you like, but I haven't got the trousers on. Right up. Trey's a bit heavy. Good heavens, have you been working all night? Yes. Mrs. Bandit, I've just made the fortune on paper. <laughs> if you ask me, that's as far as you'll get anyway. Here's your breakfast. Good. Kidneys and bacon, splendid. Like it? Rather. I hope you like what's under the other cover, too. I'm sure I shall. One week's board and lodging in advance. Hmm? Ah, I see. <laughs> but a joke, huh? Mm -hmm. But a joke I expect to be paid. Why, of course. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen it all yet. One tablecloth ruin, ten shillings. Is that all? That's all. I don't think so. To having one heart of gold, I owe you one pound, Peter Middleton. What's all this nonsense? Oh, no, you're not really angry, are you? You take your hands off of me. You're going to give me another day's credit, aren't you? Certainly not. Oh, yes, you are. You wouldn't throw us out, would you? Oh, wouldn't I? Oh. No, you wouldn't? Billy, would she? No. She's a little bit of all right. <laughs> you better hold your tongue after what you did to my tablecloth. Oh. Now, look here, Mr. Middleton, you can't soft soap me. I'm a businesswoman, and my rules must be obeyed. You either pay me what you owe me now, or... when it's more convenient. Mrs. Badger, I've known hundreds of women in my time. <laughs> now, 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 that's enough of that. Might have caught your death of cold sitting up all night and that young shaver taking all the bed. Now, look here, you have your breakfast while it's hot. <laughs> I'm getting soft in me old age. You know what I'm going to do this morning? Marry Mrs. Badger? What? That's what I'm going to do when I grow up. Eat your breakfast. 
I got a good tip last night, and I'm going to follow it up. You know what a millionaire is? Of course I do. Well, what is it? It's a fat man. What wears his Sunday suit weekdays? <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> well, there's a fat millionaire called Mr. Hatch. I'm going to see him this morning. I'm coming too. I've never seen a millionaire. Not this time, old chap. It's going to be a tough job seeing him. But when I do, I'm going to twist him round my little finger. You seem to think you can treat me exactly as you please. Darling, how grumpy you are. My fault. You knew perfectly well Brent was coming to dinner. And you stay out gallivanting with some young loafer. We weren't gallivanting. We were talking business. Business. Eat your eggs and bacon before they get cold, huh? Hmm? Hmm. What do you know about business? Not much, dear. That's why I advised him to come and see you. What? I thought you might be able to do something for him. Young blackguard. Straightening an acquaintance with you in order to get to know me. One cup of coffee, Dr. Walter said, sir. Oh. But, Daddy, he doesn't know who I am. Oh, that'd be hanged for a yarn. He's hard up and he's trying to stick me for a job. Now, the Blue Point people were first in the field, but they made one mistake. They put their filling stations either too near the big towns, like that, or else right out in the wilds where no one ever goes. These green pinheads are the Blue Point stations. <laughs> Most appropriate. And now look at the hatch positions. I tell you, no one can ever get near me. I would not be that damn millionaire when my partner gets hold of him. He'll put it across him. <laughs> I'll put it across you if I drop that cup. Mr. Hatch, who are you? My name's Middleton. Middleton? How the devil did you get in here? Mr. Hatch, you and I ought to get together. I've got a scheme lined up here that will boost the Hatch service stations 100%. Oh. If you give me a few hours of your time, I'll guarantee you a sensational success. My stations are a sensational success. My scheme will double it. The future will be assured. Competition will be squashed. All right, all right. Save your breath. I've no time to listen to all that tummy rot. Take up your rubbish and get out. Now, if you'll only listen to me. I'm not interested. Take your ideas somewhere else. Plenty of fools will fall for them, perhaps. I tell you what, take them to the Blue Point people. They can do with a few new ideas, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Blue Point, yeah. Thanks for the tip, I will. Good luck. <laughs> Blue Point. And if you'll adopt my scheme, gentlemen, I'll assure you it's the only way you'll possibly beat Ben Hatch. There's a great deal in what you say, but will the public go for it? I guarantee it. Listen, where has Hatch made his great mistake? He's catered for the car instead of the man who owns it. The Blue Point stations must be more than service stations. Our clients must, must eat to music in pleasant surroundings, dance to music with pleasant partners, give them a swimming pool in summer and an ice rink in winter. In other words, we must correct all those unsightly rows of petrol pumps into a vast chain of roadhouses where the madding crowd can go as mad as it likes and pay for the privilege. You're right there. That's what I've always thought. And this is how we'll do it. Yes, this seems to cover it. I take charge of the entire scheme for this salary and a percentage of the profits. Now, this contract calls for the usual small payment to me of a sum on signing. What sum do you suggest, Mr. Middleton? Oh, I don't really mind. Uh, well, shall we say... Oh, it's a mere formality, say a hundred pounds. Seventeen pounds and three shillings. <laughs> what a silly mistake to make. <laughs> Forgetting to give them the twenty pound note. No, not at all. Why, Mr. Middleton? No, of course we knew, of course. It must have been an oversight. Oh, naturally. Now, I wonder if Miss King has arrived yet. Yeah, Miss King. Oh, Miss King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Miss King. I, I think she's in the restaurant. <laughs> Miss King's here. Miss King, sir? Here we are. Hello. Uh, take these away and some roses. Very good, sir. Absolutely punctual. You'll make a fine secretary. Any luck? Rather, this is a celebration. Waiter, two champagne cocktails, quick. Tell me all about it. You certainly are my lucky star. We're on velvet and the future looks marvelous. I am glad. You should be. You've landed yourself a piece of a job. Oh, I'm not going to hold you to that. Hold me to it. Try and get away from me now. But uh, I'd make an awfully bad secretary, really. You'll soon learn. I'll see to that. Here's luck. Both of us. 
I told you these big businessmen are only human. It was a walkover. Mind you, I had it all worked out. It was as good as so before I even got there. I'm only glad that I've been able to be of some use to you. But as for this secretary idea... Now, you're not going back. Well, I don't really think it would work. Well, why shouldn't it? Well, you see, I'm not... I know what's the matter. You think that I've given you the job as a reward for putting me onto it? No, no, it's not... No, well, you're absolutely wrong. If I thought we weren't going through with this together, I wouldn't have had the nerve to go on with it. You can't go back on me. But surely you can manage. I wouldn't even try. I'd chuck the whole thing up here and now. You're making an awful fuss over a silly little secretary. You know there's more in it than that. And that's all the more reason why I shouldn't. So you're going back on me, hmm? Well... No, it wouldn't be you. Come on, take the job. All right, then. I'll be your secretary. You shake on that. Well, if you aren't a little marvel, there's a bed all made in the room tidy. That means you shall have an extra good lunch. Can we have lunch now? Yes, of course you can. It's all ready. <laughs> I thought it was too good to be true, you young scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but I'm dying to know all the details. Well, it was so simple. I expected you'd have a bit of a struggle. No, I just happened to walk in at the right moment. Well, I'm very glad, because at times it can be rather difficult. Who can? Mr. Hatch, of course. Hatch? Oh, I'd completely forgotten about him. Forgotten about him? But you just sold your scheme to him. Hatch? No, not Hatch. <laughs> no, he threw me out. Wait, take bring me the bill, please. Uh, yes, sir. Here it is, sir. Thank you. Get me change for five pound note. Uh, very good, sir. No, no, the Blue Point Company. You're not serious. You bet I am. I'm general manager of the new company, and we're out after Hatch's blood. And you're going to help me. Uh, you're changed, sir. Oh, thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's go. That is the gentleman I served last night. So? Ah, Mr. Middleton, eh? And did he pay his bill? Uh, yeah, he paid his bill. He asked me to get him change for a five-pound note, and he paid his bill. And where is the five-pound note? Yes, where is the five-pound note? Got in him. Hello, Sergeant Major. Anyone waiting? They're standing on each other's heads. I've had to throw out half a dozen of them. Well, treat them kindly. Tell them I'll see them as soon as I can. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. You look marvelous. Tell me a minute. Every time you come in this office, it's like sunshine in the cellar. The work's piling up, Mr. Middleton. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, yes. Well, I think that's all, Mr. Guggenheimer. Uh, can I have them the day after tomorrow? Well, sir... Yes, yes, of course I can. You know I can. Oh, very good, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. <coughs> Must look the part, you know. The three stations on the Eastern Arterial Road are nearly ready. The restaurants will be open on Saturday, and the swimming pool the following week. Not till then. Well, that's ahead of time, you know. Well, far enough ahead. Write them tell them to speed the work up. Very well. Take that call, Miss King, will you? Hello, yes? No, he's busy all day today. I'll try and find out. The Stellar Agency want to know about booking a dance band for the Rogue's Kitchen at Ripley. Tell them too late. I've already engaged Ralph Dawson. He's hot potatoes. I'm sorry, it's too late. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, yes? I'll tell him. Goodbye. Spencer Brothers want to buy the ice cream concession for all our roadhouses. Ice cream, eh? No, we make our own. This man says he's a friend of yours. Will you see him? Yes, I think I know what he wants. 
Send Mr. Hamlin in. Not being overworked, are you? No, of course not. You're sticking it marvelously. Thanks. Hello, Peter. Hello, George. Glad to see you. What brings you here? I read about your climb to fame, dropped in for the sake of old times. You've been keeping pretty busy, haven't you? I've got every hour of every day fixed for the next six months. You're lucky, I wish I had. Why? What's happened? Cleaned out. Jack came back for his revenge and took it. Ooh, that's tough. Sorry. I wonder if you have any cash that you'd like to invest in my place. Say a few hundred. Sorry, George. I've given up cards. As an investment. Not for me. Have one of these. Thanks. Why don't you give it up yourself? What could I do? Well, what'd you do before? Freelance publicity. You know what a hit and miss game that is. Why don't you take a regular job? I've never thought about it. Could you put something in my way? Yes, I might. Look here, George, you might be just the fellow to put this scheme over. Now, this is our plan of campaign. Look here, these are some of our new properties. My idea is to run a separate campaign for each one. Make motor car service purely incidental. Boost the food, the dancing, the swimming. Attract the crowd. If you make a go of this, you're on the job of your life. You mustn't bother Mr. Middleton, Billy. Well, I think you ought to know about him. Excuse me, sir. The bloke outside wants to know if you'd like to hire some elephants. Elephants? I'm so sorry, Mr. Middleton. Of course you don't. Of course we do. We can put posters on them. The greatest beast and the greatest auto service. Are they dear? I told him we'd pay him off. Half. Half. Oh, well. Half what? Half whatever he was going to ask. Tell him to write in. Very good, Mr. Middleton. Well, that's the way we're going to go to work. Do you want to join us? I'm on. Good. And don't forget our motto is, we've got to beat Hatch. The whole city's chattering about this Blue Point business. I can't believe there's anything in it. Well, some things making our returns fall off. Do you seriously mean to tell me that every motorist who buys a gallon of petrol wants to dine and dance and go swimming at the same time? Well, some things making our returns fall off. Don't keep harping on that. It's a stunt. They're trying to make me pay a big price for their pettifogging little stations. I tell you, it's a bluff. Maybe. But some things making, making our returns fall off. I'll manage this business myself. Get on to the Blue Point people. Tell their manager to come over and see me at once. Well, Hello. so long, Hatch. I've got to be checky. But I say, old man, don't forget that something's making your returns fall off. <laughs> Hello? Blue Point? Put me through to the manager, please. I'm his private secretary. Who's calling? I'm speaking for Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch? Well, give it to me. Mr. Hatch speaking. Put me through to your manager. Now look sharp about it. I'm sorry, sir, but the manager's engaged. Is there any message? Yes, no. Uh, tell him to come over and see me at once. Oh, we're very busy, Mr. Hatch. I'm afraid you must come to us. Call on you? But of all the infernal... I'll come right over. Oh, I'm afraid this week's out of the question. This week? I must see him today. Well, you better call around on chance. Goodbye. That's nothing more or less than an intentional insult. Will he not see you? Oh, he'll see me, all right. <laughs> What's the joke? Guess who's just rung up? Who? Mr. Hatch. Himself? Himself. That's funny. I think we've got him guessing. I bet we have. We must be cutting into him already. What do you want? An interview with you. Huh, that's funnier still. I told him you were busy all next week, so he's coming round just in case you'll see him. It'd serve him right if you kept him waiting. No, I don't think we'll do that. When he comes, show him in. Very well. Oh, by the way. Yes? Why don't you come and tell me these things when you've got an office just next to mine? <laughs> this way, sir, please. But I don't want to see the secretary. I want to see him. You'll have to see the secretary first, sir. And if she likes you, Bob's your uncle. Bob's me uncle? Yes. Goodbye. 
Good morning. What's the meaning of this? The meaning of what, Daddy? What are you doing here? What you've always told me to try to do. Something useful. But don't you know this firm and myself are not on friendly terms? Well, the animosity must be all on your side. Our manager said he'd be delighted to see you. Oh, he did. I suppose it was you answered the telephone. Darling, I couldn't resist it. Well, I'm very displeased. And very distressed. Daddy, you know you're proud of me. For what? For having the nerve to stand up to you. Well, perhaps I am. Tell me, why are you doing it? Dearest, I can't tell you, except that, well, I'm a help to him, and, and he needs me. Him? Who's he? The boss. I see. Daddy, I'm much happier. Please don't say anything to spoil it. All right. I won't. You're an angel. Uh, this way, Mr. Hatch. Ah, come in, Mr. Hatch. Hmm. I expected some cheap jack at the back of all this. Now I know. Well, you had the first opportunity. To do what? Open up a lot of tea and gossip parlors? I'm an oil distributor, not a dancing teacher. We claim the public are not interested in oil. They consider it dull. So we give them something to make the oil more palatable. The little lump of sugar with the dose. Mm, catch penny methods. Well, our methods are catching more penny than yours. I believe that when I see your balance sheets, if ever you dare publish any. Would you like to see our returns for the past month? Returns? I mean, they're cooked anyway. Well, please yourself. Take that, Miss King. We're satisfied. Now, cut out the bluff. You got me here, that's what you're after, I suppose. I'll tell you what I'll We're say. not interested. What? If that's all you come to say, you're wasting your time. Oh, I see. Like that, is it? Well, nobody ever said Ben Hatch ran away from a fight. I suppose you think because I'm a gentleman. Be you can be heard in the outer office. Well, I shan't be idle, Middleton. Good day. Which is the way out of this infernal office? They're going to fight. It wasn't a bluff. Ah. I wonder if we ought to give away sandwiches. That's all very well, but Hatch gets publicity. Why don't we? Look what he spends on publicity. No more than we do. Every time I pick up a paper, Hatch's name stares me in the face. Why? I don't know. Don't you? And I'll tell you. You're lying down the job, George, and it won't do. I've got to have action. So brace up, will you? What more can I do? You see what Hatch is doing? He's getting famous stage people to autograph statements about his service. Well, we go one better. We get society people. And see how Hatch likes that. It's all this publicity of theirs. We're still doing better business. But that's what I say, sir. What have you got to grumble at? And so are the Blue Point people. Two months ago, I had that concern where I wanted it. Today, we're neck and neck. What will be the position after another two months? Aye. <laughs> Hamlin's press campaign has shown marked improvement. It has helped considerably to establish our lead over Hatch. But there's one thing more. Hatch owns the best sites, and he's too powerful to be forced to sell. I've got one trump card still to play. Hatch's Group A stations are along the Barton Road. I've heard today in confidence that a new bypass is to be built there. That'll cut out not only the town, but also Hatch. Now, if you agree, We'll buy all the worthwhile sites along this new road. But we must do it at once before Hatch gets to hear of it. Now, what do you say, gentlemen? Shall we go ahead? Go right ahead, Middleton. We'll back you up in anything you do. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all I wanted to know. Listen, minute, George, I want to talk to you. I want you to...
do understand is the last time I saved your bacon. You know, your press campaign was a flop until Miss King and I took it over. I'm not so sure about that. Did you see Lady Maltwell? No. She was out. That's a lie, and you know it. Do you realize I'm keeping space in all the papers for a statement? Go and see her at once. I tell you, it's useless. These society people won't go for publicity. Don't tell me they won't go for it. Of course they'll go for it. Get a signed statement and a photograph. And don't come back without them. Flop on this, George, and you're through. That's not very friendly, is it? Friendship and business are two different things. No. Hmm? Begging your pardon, Mr. Hatch, but there's a body here. The body? You're giving the name of Robinson, sir. Well, I'm terribly busy. What's he want? He wants to see you, sir. Well, I can't see every Tom, Dick and Harry. I think you'll see him, sir. Oh? Something important? Something very useful, sir. Well, show him in. I'm sorry, Brent. I'll have to ring off. I'll call you up in a few seconds. Somebody coming in, yes. Yeah. Mr. Robinson? Yes, Mr. Robinson. Well, what can I do for you? Sit down. It's more a question of what I can do for you. Really? I rather wanted to speak to you in confidence. Mr. Forsyth is my confidential secretary. You can speak quite freely, Mr. Robinson. Yes, but supposing we don't come to terms. When I say you can speak in confidence, I mean it. Come on, what do you want to sell me? What I have to sell you is equally interesting to the Blue Point Company. In fact, it will decide your battle once and for all. Well, what is it? A little information. Just one thousand pounds worth. Are you still interested? Go ahead. There's going to be a new bypass road. Where? I'll show you. What's that? I don't know, but it looks important. You bet it is. We get more important every day. Hello, what's this? Right, nothing's wrong, is there? No, 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 no. No, it'll be all right, it's got to be. Only somebody's been telling secrets. What secrets? Oh, you wouldn't know, son. It's not your department. You might tell Miss King that I want to see her, will you? Maybe she can find out. Maybe she can. But she ain't in yet. Oh, when she does come in. There she is now. Well, Daddy, can I have the dress? I don't suppose I'll get a moment's peace till you do. Plenty be enough? Yes, thank you. Plenty. Personally, I think a working girl should support herself. Fifteen. Ask her to come in here, quick. want me? Yes. But we've practically closed for all the sites. There must be a mistake. There's no mistake. Hatches out bidders for every site on that bypass. Our offer's been turned down. But how did you know there was to be a bypass? We had that in confidence. Yes, I thought we had it in confidence. Peter, you... You don't suspect that I... Uh -huh. It's not a question of suspicion. You know Hatch, don't you? Why, certainly. I don't mean through his coming here. You met him outside. Yes. Why not? You don't mean to suggest that... How long have you known him? A long time. I see. That's why you suggested I should go to him in the first place. You and Hatch have been thick for years. 
You're just a spy for him. You're talking absolute rubbish. Carrying secrets and being paid for it. About the dirtiest job there is. You shan't talk to me like that. I've stuck by you from the very first moment I gave you my word. I didn't have to be a secretary. No, I can see that now. Do you think I'd stoop to do a thing like that? And there wasn't much stooping about it just now. I saw you taking money from Hatch. You have played me until the market was ready and now you're selling me out. All right. If that's what you think, I'll go. Sometime you'll find out how wrong you are. And as for Ben Hatch, it may interest you to know that he's my father. to her and she never even says goodbye. Has she gone? Yes, she's gone. May soon we'll be going too. Where? Oh, here, there and everywhere. Looking for mugs. Never mind, partner. Hello. Yes, Blue Point. Mr. Middleton's secretary speaking. What? Well, he's very busy. A bloke from the road's development offices. Hello. Yeah, oh, Henderson. Middleton here. What? They're not building that road for 15 years? Just been decided? No, no. No, it's all right. Gives me a fighting chance. Yes, goodbye. Billy, we're all right. They're not building that road for 15 years. They won't last 15 minutes, Forsyth. I'm thinking it's bad luck on Jan Middleton. He's the brains of that concern. Oh, I've seen that. I was wrong to let him go to them in the first place. But I'm taking care of him. He's just the man we want for our new company. Clever. Forsyth. Get him on the phone. Just to rub it in, I'm going to sell him all our old stations in Group A. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Mr. Hatch, you're nothing but a genius. <laughs> yes, it's a lucky get out. Hatch is holding all those worthless sites. Trouble is, he can afford it. Now, if only we could persuade him to sell us his Group A stations. He'd never fall for it. Ah, uh, fair not. You know, I've got a half a mind to ring him up. Yes? Oh, put him through. Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yes. Yes, I'll be glad to. I'll come right over. Got him. The old fox wants to see me. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> So I told him it wasn't any use waiting, and he left. Oh, good morning, Mr. Middleton. Mr. Hatch is uh, expecting you. So, it was you. Look here, Peter, I... I Thanks, you've been a great help. And the joke of it is, the young idiot will think I'm doing him a favor. <laughs> Mr. Middleton. Well, I'd better care. No, 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 stay and see the fun. Ah, Mr. Middleton, how are you? Never felt better. Good. Mr. Hatch, sit down. Thanks. Now, I asked you to come over to see me because, well, quite frankly, I'm getting a little tired of the battle. Indeed? Yes, you fellows are too warm for me. My returns have been falling every week, so I've decided to sell out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, I know when I'm beaten, don't I? And I admire your crowd for having beaten me. And to prove it, I'm prepared to offer you the whole of my Group A stations at a very moderate price. You know, that sounds a very tempting offer. I think we might fall for that. I don't say fall for it. It's such a depressing sound. Why not say rise to it? Rise to it? Isn't that what fish do to bait? Uh, oh, yes, quite. But there's nothing fishy about this office, is there? Not in the least, sir. What's the price? 50,000 for the whole group. I thought... 30,000. Oh, come now, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. 
I tell you what I'll do. I'll make it 40,000. Subject to my directors agreeing, I'll accept that. You'd better let us know quickly. Well, there'll be a director's meeting tomorrow. I'll put the question to them then. Right. By the way, haven't you better give me a written option? It's all here. I'll fill in the amount. 40,000 pounds. It's a rare bargain. You realize this forces you to sell? You can't go back on it now. My dear boy, I'm only too glad that you should have them. It's a very sporting way of taking your defeat, sir. Not at all. By the way, I hear you've bought all the sights on this proposed new bypass. Bypass? Yes. Yeah. They make good landing places for aeroplanes. What the devil did he mean by that? I say, Hatch. What, what bypass was he talking about? Why, the new Barton bypass. I see. That's not scheduled to be built for another 15 years. And I know because my brother's on the board. What? <laughs> and you thought he was doing you a favor. <laughs> oh! Mr. Robinson, sir. Well, Mr. Hatch, I've come for my check. Check? Check? Get out. Get out before I kill you. <laughs> yeah, he's that devilish smart fellow, that Middleton. It's Mr. Middleton, Miss Cynthia. Oh, I can't see him. Tell him to go away. Oh, no, don't. Wait. Well, Miss Hatch. I can't see you now. I mean, uh, well, I'm going out to dinner. No, you're not. So, oh, all the time you've led me to believe that... Uh, well, you wouldn't have given me the job if you'd known. Job? You didn't want the job. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. You just want to make a fool of me. No, I didn't. You thought I'd sold you out. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Peter? Well, now everything's lost. Lost? It's wonderful. When Hatch finds out what I've done to him, he'll burn up. I just hate him to catch me here now. So you've got it all your own way. Well, haven't I? Mr. Middleton? No, he won't be back for a long time. What's that? White elephants? You'd better sell them to Mr. Hatch. <laughs> 